Oh hey guys, it's time for another JKFX tutorial. Let's open Flash. So we've got our blank document. You can recall that we want to create a new ActionScript 3.0 file when that first screen comes up. So let's type V for brush. When you select the brush tool, you'll notice that over here you have a use pressure button that allows you to do thick and thin when utilizing a pressure sensitive tablet. Also you get smoothing over here which I like to set to 40. By default I think that's 50. And that'll just give you a nice smoothing amount. You can kind of see when you're making the stroke before you release it's like all grainy and stuff. Well how much it smooths determines how to look after you release the pressure on your stylus. I'm going to do control Z a couple times to get rid of all that. Alright, if you want to select the color, you just click on this guy and you just choose your color. You can do it that way. Or you could click on this corner icon there if you want a more precise color picker. Something I'm thinking like that. Add that to custom colors. Sweet. Say OK. Or you can come up here to the colors panel, of course, and select the color there. That's usually the one that I use. Or you can select it over here. And then there's another place you can select your stroke color here. We'll talk about what that is. Also, up here in the color panel, if I click on these two, it toggles between stroke color and uh, fill color. Uh, brush uses the fill color and I'll explain the difference in a minute. So I come over here and I make my shape. And I don't like my shape, so I'm going to make another one. Yeah, that's a good shape. Alright. Type K on the keyboard for paint fill. I have no idea why K is the paint fill hotkey. So just go with it. Control plus will zoom in or you can type Z on the keyboard to select the zoom tool and then you can zoom in or zoom out. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what Vector is. Flash is different from other programs like Photoshop so it renders things in Vector not in Raster and I'll show the difference. If you select the uh, subselection tool here and then come on down double click on this layer color and then change the uh, outline color to like something dark, like dark blue. And then when you click on this, you can see all these little points. And these little guys are vectors. And they have little handles. So like, if I click on, say, this guy. Ah, there we go, that little uh, square there. Click on him once and then it shows me the uh, two vectors coming off of him. So, Basically, as a helicopter flies over, um, you probably won't be able to hear that very well, but oh well. So basically, there's, in physics, there's something called a vector as well. But in physics, a vector is a direction and a velocity. But in flash, it's a direction and a strength. So obviously I can do the direction by rotating, and I can do the strength by making it longer. So if I pull it way out, then it makes it really strong. If I pull it way in, then it doesn't really have much effect on that curve. And if I release it there, then it's just like, curvy like that. Beauty of Flash is that you can control vectors in a very simple way. I never use the subselection tool. That's just the way that I kind of demonstrate how vectors work. Normally, I use the selection tool. So if you mouse over an edge, you'll get the little curvy icon by your arrow and if you just click and drag without first selecting it you can adjust these vector lines like so and if you click once and then drag you'll notice it moves the whole shape because the whole thing is highlighted and clicking and dragging on the selected shape will move it so the key is to click and drag on stuff that's not selected. And if you want to deselect, you can either uh, click off on the stage, or you can do, I think it's Control-Shift-A. Yeah, Control-Shift-A. 
is deselect all. So you notice at some points you get the icon with the little elbow, and that's where there's a point with two vectors coming off of it, but they're going in different directions. So we'll check this guy and click on that guy. Yep, so these two dudes are going in different directions. If I were to move this around, you'll notice that at some point it snaps when it's going the same direction as its neighbor. And now, when I go to the selection tool, it uh, doesn't get the elbow, it gets the curve. So you can also snap elbows into curves using the selection tool by just simply grabbing an elbow with snapping turned on. You'll see snapping right here. You can toggle it on or off. And then it'll snap into a neighbor or it'll snap like that. And now it's not an elbow anymore. Cool. So the great thing about vectors, another great thing about vectors, that is, is you can edit them that way. The really um, obsessive compulsive way, which is like, edit, edit. Or you can edit in a more freehand artistic way by just doing like e free eraser and just like erasing that stuff, right? So if I come up here, I don't know, maybe that flame does, nah, it doesn't, I don't want to do that. Yeah. And then I can do V for select and just select this uh, dude here and hit delete. And then erase again. Uh, something like that. Okay, so I got this fire shape going on, right? I'm going to use the pencil tool. This dude right here. Quick key for that is Y. Uh, some people sometimes have issues with the smoothing being all out of whack. It's probably because you have it set to straighten, which does like weird stuff. It makes it straight sometimes, but curved other times. So keep an eye out for that. I like to do smooth. And that one's also set to 40. I think if you change the brush to 40, it automatically sets the pencil tool to 40 as well. So the pencil tool creates strokes using the stroke color, which is different from the fill color, as you can recall. It also has its own properties over here for stroke thickness. If I crank that up, I can do a really stick, thick one. I can do medium sized and so forth. Um, the difference between a stroke and a fill is significant. I can paint fill in between strokes like that. I can bend a stroke the way that I bend the edge of a paint fill. And I can snap it to other strokes like that. And works pretty fine. So you'll notice that a stroke is basically like an edge of a fill but the fill is like a, the whole body, right? So I can select these segment by segment. If I double click on any one segment, it will select all strokes that are touching it. Unless the stroke is of a different uh, style over here. If it has different properties, it will not select the thicker or thinner strokes. Whatever but what's cool about this is I can double click and delete large amounts of them at the same time delete that, double click on that guy and delete him, and double click on that guy and delete him. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use this, oh my gosh, it's too thick. I usually like to put the stroke down to 0.1. So we got a shape there, and uh, something, something shape, something, something shape. I always want to check, uh, <clears throat> I want to zoom in pretty close because these strokes can be deceiving. They're little deceivers. See how this does this here? Sometimes, you know, like, you'll have something like that happen where you draw and then you draw again. And it looks like they're touching, but they're not. Uh, that will let the paint fill bleed out when we go to fill in our shape. So make sure they're touching. It's much easier to do if you have snapping turned on. And then go ahead and select a fill color. I always, always, even today, think I'm selecting my fill color when I'm doing all this, you know? I'm like, it's perfect. And then I go to fill, and I'm like, uh, it's not working. So you gotta switch to the fill color 
change that guy, not the stroke color. So if you make that mistake, don't worry, uh, it's common. So fill that, and fill that, and then I double click, delete, double click, delete, and you got a shape. And then you can kind of use the brush tool if you want. I like to use, uh, yeah, the second one is good, this guy here. You can select sizes of brush over here. Um, I'd never use the big one. Well, I don't want to say never. I rarely, rarely use the big one. But this third one's probably about right for me. So you can like come in here and like you know carve it out with color if you want. It's kind of a weird angle there, so I can paint fill that guy. And so it's remembering, or it's looking at this orange as one big fill, right? And uh, yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. That's uh, basics of drawing tools in Flash. Those are the ones I use the most common. So hope you learned something. And go ahead and go to the next video where I'll show you how to do even more things.